regardless of what faith tradition you come out of, we have been told that this, all of creation, is ours to take care of, to be stewards of. And in that you have the environmental part of this, uh, this fight that we're in. The Lord is our creator and we are living in the Lord's creation as in part caretakers of the world and one another. It interests me that, that, that the Bible, the Torah, what we have, begins with the story of creation, which is really not about science. The, the story, the first story, and there are two stories of creation, is really about day one, day two, day three. It's really like a calendar, a division of time and, and understanding the creation that way. But it's the second story of creation about the Garden of Eden that interests me, that, the, that in fact there was a garden, that the earth is a garden, and, and Adam was placed in the garden to tend the garden. Our tradition teaches us that we are guardians the, of the creation, that is to say, we're supposed to guard the garden. That's the source of our food and our water. We can't live without the earth and without clean water and clean air. The natural world is not ours. It's not our environment as if we're at the center of, of the whole universe or this whole planet. To call it the environment is to say it's all around us. People of faith call the universe a creation. The artistic genius of another and higher power, and our role is one of stewardship and care of creation, not exploitation and using it as if it's ours to do with as we please. Scientists say that the 21st century is going to be the century of water scarce water. One of the rare treasures of upstate New York is our abundant, deep aquifers and rivers and lakes and wetlands. Are we going to jeopardize that at the very time when we begin to see that that may be the most needed resource for our children and their children? No, we cannot do that. To threaten using up our finite supply of fresh water, ever dwindling with global warming and overpopulation by polluting it with toxic chemicals, some known carcinogens, is unconscionable. In many um, spiritual traditions, water is sacred. Um, in my own tradition as a Christian and a United Methodist, we use water for baptisms. Water symbolizes purity, it can symbolize the Spirit of God, it can symbolize wisdom from God coming down from on high. There's so many images in various spiritual traditions of water. Um, fracking takes something as beautiful and pure as water and intentionally contaminates it in the process. And that, to me, is a sin. I have longtime friends in the American Indian community that I've known for years and years and years. And they used to live close to the environment. They were very in touch with the natural world. Even my grandmother was in touch with the natural world in a way that I can't imagine. They were cold in the winter and they were hot in the summer. And so, you know, one, one of the truths is, is that we're very out of touch with the natural world and, and what it means to us. New York State is such a natural treasure and its citizens long have recognized that. The Adirondack Park is the first and largest state park in the country. So we have, we have a natural heritage here that's been protected and respected and reverenced in the past, and we have an obligation to continue that tradition going forward. We can't say for sure what will happen with, with hydrofracking, but there's enough incidents out there for us to be terribly concerned, and it's one of those situations where if we're wrong about it being bad, we don't lose as much, but if we're right about it being bad, we lose our water, we lose the earth, uh, and there's no getting that back. There's just too many big questions. There's plenty of scientific information that uh, this is a dangerous practice that will harm people. It has harmed people. 
we really need to take into consideration of, of what we're leaving future generations who will not benefit economically, but will have to carry the environmental costs of, of hydrofracking. I tend to view all issues like fracking from the lens of religious issues that, that are about how we comport ourselves as human beings, how we have a relationship to the world we live in, meaning the people in the world and the physical world. How am I going to be more fulfilled as a human being? And it's not by pillaging. It's not by taking advantage of it. It's not by exploitation. And in this case, the environment is, is being exploited and has been in ways that are dangerous. And I think fracking fits into that kind of exploitation and I think ultimately brings harm. We're all connected. You can't pluck something out of this web, this tapestry, without it affecting everyone. We can't make the fight be about the environment and not about also the economic justice. We aren't just responsible for the earth. We are responsible for each other. We're supposed to take care of the lesser among us. Define that as you will. And we haven't been doing that. If we really want to make choices that are moral and good, we have to look at how do we stand with people who don't have the voice, who are affected by the decision, but, but aren't being included in the decision. I think it is, it is uh, outrageous that the, our economy and the, the livelihood of middle class people has been so savaged by corporate policy in the last 30 years. And yet the corporations now come and say, we will give you jobs if you will let us plunder the very nature on which our future depends. I think we need to continue with our commitment in, in the struggle because it, it, it's a long commitment. We're up against a very formidable uh, opponents uh, with uh, deep pockets and uh, you know, well organized. They've, they've done this type of thing in other places and know how to work it. Uh, but we need to stand up and manifest our, our precautionary principle, our, our willingness to say no to a process that we're convinced will harm people. We cannot sit on our hands anymore. We need the faith-based leadership to say, all right, I'm not going to leave it up to another organization or think that my government is going to change. I have to do something. I commit myself today forward to being an activist in order to save my world, our state, our nation, our globe. Regardless of whether we're rich or we're poor, whatever our race, whatever our religion or non-religion, we're all dependent on the earth. And I think we have to try to make that case as quietly and effectively as we can. I pray that people will, in the midst of all of the pressure and economic difficulty, that people will not lose their sense of reverence, their sense that we are accountable to a higher power and, and force that's working for our good a reverence that will not let us compromise with certain obvious facts that only those who have great profits to gain are willing to jeopardize what the rest of us have to lose. A sense that there is a sacredness to reality and to the world and we cannot just follow everyone who would plunder it for their advantage. <laughs>